Monday morning, everyone. Welcome to Monday Devotionals. What an amazing, fun, uh, joyful weekend. A, a lot of laughter. Uh, for those of you that were able to make it to the park, we got to celebrate what Dave Hessler is doing in Tijuana and what we're going to be able to do as a church here regionally serving our seniors during the holiday season. Yesterday's message on uh, the royal law to love our neighbor as ourself. Uh, it was just great response, great reactions, and, and great stories. It was an easy message to speak because we have so many people in our uh, church that are just living out that royal law to love our neighbor as ourself. But let me jump into this. Uh, this week, I want to talk to leaders, and, and I, this will apply to everyone. But I want to talk to those that are leading families, they're, they're leading in their workplace, uh, you're, you're just leading something in, in what a time in, in the history of our world to be a leader. There's a lot of fear out there. There's a lot of people wanting you to respond in your leadership based on fear. So I want to I want to share with you this week to think about how to use fear as a catalyst for greatness. Uh, maybe greatness is too grand of a word. I want to challenge you to use fear as a catalyst to move forward and to be effective in your leadership. Abram Maslow said this. He said, one can choose to go backward toward safety or forward toward growth. Growth must be chosen again and again. Fear must be overcome again and again. Really, the reality is when, when we lead something, whether you're leading a classroom, a family, a business, a nonprofit, a church, whatever you're leading, you are always going to have to choose growth over fear. It's interesting, the most frequent command in Scripture, the most frequent is to not be afraid. Why? Because being afraid is inevitable. It's how the enemy works. It's how our culture works. We want, for, for, for even economic reasons, our culture wants us to operate and respond and spend in fear. And fear can keep us from doing the brave, important things that we were created to do. Because I've seen it, and I've seen it in myself, when leaders are ruled by fear, it has even greater consequences than anyone else leading by fear or living in fear. Because when leaders live in fear, it affects so many people. It affects businesses, employees, communities, congregations, and nations. For those of you that know me, you may have heard this story before, but my son, when he was in college about 10 years ago, wow, how old am I? He was in college about 10 years ago. He was attending a college in Southern California and he was working for a grocery store. And late one night, a man came running into the grocery store while my son stood at the checkout stand. And as the man ran past him, he turned back and he had a gun and he was shooting. He was shooting and my son looked at who he was shooting at and he was shooting at a policeman who had been running after him. My son was caught in the crossfires of this guy shooting it at the policeman and the policeman shooting back. My son quickly dove for cover behind a chip display as shards of nacho cheese snacks and debris flew all around him. He said it was like slow motion in the matrix. The sound of the shattering glass doors uh, were, were, were deafening to my son. The sound of the uh, shattering glass doors at the entrance, coupled with two guns firing at my son, left him dazed. And it was just kind of a surreal moment. Thankfully, uh, besides being a little shaken, my son was fine. He was fine. He, he avoided the gunshots. But as protocol goes, uh, he had to go into uh, the police station and make a statement. And he had to make a statement about what he saw. And this is where the story gets interesting because he crossed paths with an amazing couple. They were from Washington State where the husband was an accounting professor and they were people of faith who wanted to teach at the college my son was going to, Azusa Pacific in Southern California. And it just so happened 
that uh, the college wanted him to work there. They wanted him to come. The school had actually offered this man a job and the husband wanted to take the position, but his wife had reservations about living in Southern California. And this is what she was afraid of. She was afraid it was not safe. At the time, the, the, the university encouraged the couple to make a trip to the area just to get a feel, just to get a feel of Southern California. And so it just so happened that after landing at the airport, they decided to stop at a local grocery store <laughs> for some snacks before heading to their hotel. And instead of getting snacks, the rental car was riddled with the very bullets my son was dodging from inside as they passed in front of the windows, bullet holes came out and hit their rental car. This couple had been in Southern California for less than two hours and their worst fears were coming true. Thankfully, they were rattled, but they were spared that night also. As my son heard this story, he thought, wow, there's no way this couple is ever gonna take the job now. About three months later, my son was working at the grocery store and he turned down an aisle and he saw a familiar face. Bonded by flying bullets, my son recognized the woman he had met from Washington that night and they exchanged hugs. He was surprised. He said, what are you doing here? And she said, you know what? We have decided to take the job and move to Southern California. And then she said this to my son, she said, we're not going to let some random act of violence keep us from doing what God wants. We're not going to let fear have the last word. I love that lady. Never met her. I love that couple. You know, Rosalie Bardot said this. She said, in any given moment, we have two options. Two, to step forward into growth or to step back into safety. Leaders, what a time to be leading. Because it's easy to lead by fear right now. Fear of what people will think. Fear of being unpopular. In this year, leaders need to lead out of conviction, not out of fear. I believe the world needs more leaders, pastors, CEOs who will courageously step forward and not allow fear to have the last word. You know, I often meet and even consult with NGO leaders, executive teams at churches, nonprofit leaders who serve people in some of the world's most difficult areas. And when I consult, this is one of my questions. What do you fear the most? And guess what? Leaders who lead large organizations, you know what they, they fear? The same thing you and I do. It's the same thing. They fear change. They fear the unknown. They fear rejection. They fear not reaching their fullest potential. They fear lack of resources. In 2020, there's a lot of leaders fearing lack of resources. They fear that they're going to have to get out of their comfort zone. They fear, ooh, the big one, failure, the big F word, failure. And then when I ask them uh, to rate on a scale of one to 10, how much of an influence does fear have on your decision-making as a leader? You know what the average number is? Seven, 10 being the most fearful. And we discuss, we discuss how can we lower that number? Whoever you are watching this, leaders, non we're all leaders because leaders are influenced. So we all are influencing someone. How do we lower that number where we're making life decisions based on wisdom, God's direction, what's best and not on fear. And I, I will usually share these three things. So I'll share these three things and then I'll be done today. This is a long one today. Three things to overcome fear. Three things real fast. One, do the thing you fear the most. Step into it. C. Joy Bell C. said this. She said, don't be afraid of your fears. They're not there to scare you. They're there to let you know that something is worth it. When you're afraid of something, it's usually because it's worth doing it. It's worth fighting through. So do the thing you fear the most. Secondly, so before that, this week, what have you been procrastinating? What have you been saying? I don't really want to make a decision right now because there's fear. Step into that fear. I challenge you to do that this week. Two, 
And this is simple, but it's so important. Surround yourself with people who will remind you you are brave. You've got to be around people who will encourage you and remind you that you don't have to give in to fear. Uh, A.A. Mine, who wrote Winnie the Pooh and Piglet and all of that, said, Promise me you'll always remember you're braver than you believe and stronger than you seem and smarter than you think. Let me tell you that today, right now, wherever you are watching this. Promise me you will remember you're braver than you believe and you're stronger than you seem and you're smarter than you think. So this week, do the thing you fear the most. Surround yourself with people who will remind you that you are brave and then lean in. Lean into God's love because the opposite of fear is love. Perfect love, God's love, Cast out fear. So it's not just about grin and bearing it and trying to be more courageous. It's really about leaning into God and allowing his love to transform that fear into his love. Because they do say this, that love and fear cannot coexist. Because when you look at it, love expands, fear constricts. Love frees, fear restricts. Love will clarify while fear will contradict and cause all crazy kinds of things. So this week, lean in and do the thing you fear the most. Surround yourself. Ask people, please to remind me to not live my life being afraid. And then exchange fear with God's love. Fear not is found 365 times in scripture. One for each day of the year, each day. Each day, each day, fear will attempt to keep us from doing the courageous things we are called to do as leaders. It's inevitable, but instead of avoiding it, as leaders, we need to overcome it. Let's be brave this week, just like that couple. Let's not allow fear to have the last word. God bless you. Have an amazing week.